Chris here with Music Marketing TV, and today we're going to look at five ways to save CPU in your FL Studio projects. The first one is the buffer size. This is the one everyone brings up. Should be your first call when you're looking to do this. So if you go to the audio settings, you just go up here to options and then audio settings. We see here that we've got our sound card. Now, if you don't have a sound card, like an external one, you can just go with the FL Studio ASIO. And in some cases, this actually outperforms some sound cards that I have have traveled with. So sometimes I just leave the sound card at home if, because sometimes I bring them just for the CPU boost. And I found that this sometimes just matches it. So all you do is you come in, you click on the buffer length, and you make this as big as possible. Now, if it's smaller, you get a bigger CPU hit, but the latency is much lower. So if you're playing a live instrument, uh, this is great. But in this case, we are trying to max out our CPU and save as much as we can. Max out in savings. So we're going to make this bigger. So now there's a bigger latency hit, but you can see it just dropped quite a bit. So this, is, this should be your first call of action. Now, if you do have an external sound card or you need the inputs on the card, you're going to have to select it. And it's complaining to me about the sample rate, but it'll it figures itself out. And we'll go ahead and click on this, and I will again max this out. I should note... This can cause, and you see how it actually idles around the same? It's kind of like just blows my mind, but I need the inputs. Um, I should point out that Discord, uh, YouTube, other things, if you're going to have those things open, don't like bigger sample sizes with some sound cards or sample buffer sizes. So if I am doing that, you might hear clicks and pops occasionally. And in those cases, I have to move it back to 128 or 64 to give those things a smooth experience. So if you notice that, that's, that's what's going on there. But we're, we're in the DAW. It's, it's fine. So we're going to make this as big as possible to save our CPU. And I usually do this when I'm mixing because I no longer care about, you know, hitting keyboards and things and having them respond quickly. So now that we have this done, uh, we're going to go ahead and close that. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is bounce to audio. Now, this tip sort of multi-layered. It combines with other tips as we go. But first, let's just talk about bounce and audio. So you have all these effects, all these things are going on, and you know, you want to save some CPU. You don't want the effects to be uh, such a problem. So what you can do is you can you can bounce it and then turn all that stuff off. And it's much easier to just read, you know, a, a wave file than it is to compute all this stuff. So for example, let's just do it on the drums here. Uh, drums actually probably not the best contender because on the drums, the reason I might not want to do this is the kick drum, for example, has some side chaining going on. So I don't really want to touch this because the side chaining thing, when you're bouncing, you have to be careful to make sure you actually bounce the side chaining as it happens. And I just want to get some quick CPU boost. So let's look over here, maybe the main pluck. Um, we can see here, it doesn't have anything going through it. And so let's go ahead and bounce this one. There's a lot going on. It's a pretty intense effect. So we're going to go ahead, right click on it and go to consolidate tracks. I'll go from track start. It's going to ask, you know, what we want, this is all fine, we'll hit start, and it's gonna go ahead and bounce through there. Obviously, this is gonna be a lot easier to do if your projects are well organized. Things are nested correctly, and you've got things linked up uh, much easier. I should also point out that this is going to bounce the MIDI, but if I were to do this on the drum submix up here, while this is you know doing its thing, uh, if I were to do this up here, what would happen is it would bounce the drum submix entirely. So it wouldn't bounce this MIDI here directly. Uh, instead, it would bounce the audio track itself because I've linked this to an audio track. So this has all the drums going through it, so it would bounce all the drums. Uh, so you just need to be a little bit aware of your track mode when you set it up. If you've set it up to be an audio track, it's going to behave differently than if you've set it up to work through MIDI. Now, how do you pick the ones you're going to do? Again, I would stay away from anything with side chaining, um, send effects can be a, a little tricky on make sure that the way you're bouncing it is going to bounce all the effects that you would want. And I'll show you how to sort of pick some really good candidates that will give you the biggest savings. So here we go. It's all done. And there it is. It's muted this clip. If you just alt click and it has to be the uh, right alt in order to do this. So to bring them back, if you, if you want to change it and now it's all there. And I've made a rookie mistake. So when I bounced it, I left the mastering chain on. So I left the L2 on. 
And so the L2 is going to pump it and we don't wanna bounce it with this on because we're gonna turn this off afterwards. So this was a little bit of an oops, <laughs> shouldn't have done that. But we'll see in a second, another one that I'm going to bounce that will give us actually a bigger CPU saving than this entire one right here. So let's, let's take a look at that. So you can bounce things and save them. Uh, but let's go over to the next one, which is how do you pick what to save besides, you know, being careful of side chaining? Well, if you go over to the options and then you go to the plugin performance monitor, which is not an option, it's in view, uh, you click this, it'll show you your biggest hits on what plugins are taking the most. And we can see here right now that pad two is just a sucker for the CPU. So we're going to want to bounce this guy. He's, he's taking up a bunch of CPU. We actually notice a lot of pad related things up here. And before we move on, let me share with you another tip. So let's go tip number four would be all these things are moving around and we see our CPU is idling quite high. And on some machines, this makes it difficult to do things if it's all laggy. So if we come up to tools, go over to macros, there is a smart switch disable for all plugins. What this does is it turns off plugins, all of them, and then they only turn on when they're being used. So they no longer can idle your CPU at these higher loads. So we're gonna go ahead and click that and it just drops like a rock and we can see it pop down. So the CPU usage is still there. If we were to hit play, it'll bounce back up. As you can see, but now it's only using the things that are actually being used at that time. And then, uh, so in some sections, you'll, you'll notice quite a bit of improvement, but in the sections that are still really problematic, you'll still have a problem. So. Uh, but this could give you control over your session. So now let's look at that plugin performance monitor here. And we can sort of see here what it thinks is going on. Let's give it some stuff to work with. So we can see where things are sort of sitting and the things that are taking up. And if we were to play through this, we'll see that this pad section right here is just monstrous. lot of 20s all at the same time so this is going to eat a lot of cpu and then the main base plug is another one that's going to take quite a bit just because of i mean if you just look at the automation and effects uh we could you know consolidate all of this so let's go let's bounce this pad section based on the insight we got from the performance monitor so we'll come in first let's bypass the effects on the mastering chain which is just it's just a limiter and let's go over to the pad bus and we'll leave all this on. And what we wanna do is we wanna bounce this. And I think it's much easier to do it just directly from the tracks. So make sure that the only thing on here is the thing you intend to bounce. And this is going through the bus. So this is going to bounce all the pads through the bus track right here, the pad bus. And so we will right click this and we will bounce, uh, where are you at? Consolidate tracks. From track start, we'll hit start, we'll let it bounce. This one should go quite a bit quicker because it's not the entire length of the song. And, you know, we're able to pinpoint sections to save a lot of CPU very quickly. So this will make it much easier on the beginning. The other one is now that the limiter's bypassed, I would go through and do a pass on this one and also, um, you know, bounce the main, the main riff. And that should free up my CPU and I probably wouldn't have to bounce much else. Um, these two are the big sort of offenders now, maybe the other baseline. So it's going to complain to me about the thing. Yep, there we go. And so there it is. And if we go ahead and you see it's been soloed. And if we were to um, solo these up and then, you know, unmute the other one. So it's the same. Just to show you that they are identical and it's nice that it mutes it for you. Now, you should note that this is now going through the master track and it might even be worth, I'm actually not sure if this makes a difference or not because the smart switch disables on, but I have some automation here for, for this. And maybe I don't want that anymore because I'm done, I'm, you know, I think it might turn the, this plugin on. So I could turn this off for sure to ensure that, you know, I'm getting my CPU savings, but that's the bouncing. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you, my last tip for you is sort of a do it 
if you desperately need it to work, but I would encourage you in whatever way is possible to use these tips first. Um, if you really need it to work and you also don't have time to comb through and get all the bouncing and everything working as you want, uh, what you can do is you can come into options and then go to file settings. And then if you go to project, there is a pulse per quarter PPQ. This is the resolution of the grid. So a higher resolution will take much more processing power, but you get more spots to place audio. So it's more precise where you place events, MIDI, things like that. Uh, if you bring this down to 24, some data, if it's on spots that are, you know, not on a 24 grid, maybe you used a spot that was on the 96 grid and it just doesn't line up, um, that data is going to be moved around. And, and so it might screw up rhythms if you have very precisely placed rhythms at a particular grid. So I really don't recommend doing this unless, you know, you're looking for a fast way to just get it working. There's been a few times in where I teach in a class and I have a session and I realize my laptop can't handle it. This is where I go first because it usually gives the biggest bang for the buck. So we'll go ahead, we'll hit yes. It's going to do it. I would not save the project. I, I usually save a copy uh, to be safe about it. But you can see the grid sort of moves around, but check it out. So before we were idling quite high, let's go over to like the, uh, well, we did the pad section. Let's bring the pads back just as a, just to show you the CPU hit difference now. Um, and everything's on, so this is all fine. We're idling around 50 now. On the laptop where I was doing this a lot, uh, I was maxing out. I was in the red, I was getting buffer pops. I had tried everything. And the only thing that I could really do to get it all the way down, because bouncing wasn't an option because I had to demo the plugins. So the plugins had to be rendered real time for this to work uh, the way I wanted to show it. So this wound up being my option. And because I wrote things pretty much on the grid, uh, there, there wasn't an issue with really any, no data really got screwed up, but there is a whole lot of caveats with that one. If you are placing things precisely or using like little movements around, or if you've taken a long time to nudge things just right, uh, there's probably a better way uh, to do it. Uh, but anyways, those are my five tips and I've been able to get pretty much any session working on my laptop or on my main rig using those tips. As long as you can, you know, get the, CPU under control, usually just through printing, uh, you can get it to work. So hopefully this saves one of your projects, makes it a little more usable or friendly or gives you control back so you can continue to add to it. Uh, subscribe to that bell icon and drop a comment down below if you've used any of these. If you have any others, I'm always game for learning new ways to save some CPU. And have a blessed day.